Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we will cover diving into the event details in addition to registering for an event. If you recall from the last lesson, we have a home page of list of events. Um, and then subsequently, we also covered creation of the event for these home, uh, to create this home page of list of events. What we want to do next is basically allow the user to register for events. And to do this, what I want to achieve is basically have a new page when the user clicks in here that navigates to event details that shows the detailed event similar to um, a lot of normal registration, similar to a lot of event apps out there. And then have a button at the bottom that allows them to register for the event. What I won't be covering is basically the payment of events because I actually have a lot of tutorials on using Stripe to um, collect those payments. I'll link below the playlist containing all the videos I've created related to Stripe Connect. Anyway, so let's create a event detail page. Um, I'll do something very basic as well, similar to how I've done it for the create event. Um, we're just gonna create, start off with a blank page. Let's create a blank page for the event detail. And then maybe the, what I want to do here is firstly pass in the parameter of the event. So I'm going to pass in that event document that has been clicked on. And now that we have the event document, we can get the attributes of them. So firstly, I'm going to show the event name at the very top. And what I want to do next is basically um, show those details in the bottom, right? So what are the attributes that we had, if you recall? We had these, all these attributes, name, photos, time, price, address, etc. So first things first, maybe we add a photo up top um, of the event. So let's just pick this and press event doc, photo, uh, event photo. This will be shown up front. And the next fill we want is the event start time. Let's call this start time. Now I'm just going to left align it. Let's call it, uh, let's combine the text first. So I'll put start time or start. And then the, we're going to go event document, get property document, event start date time. Um, maybe I'll pick this format, similar to how we've done it for the creation events. And then add a space here and then the time itself. So I'll just copy this variable and then I will put JM as the time format. So I think very, very uh, basic here to show you how it all works. And for end, I would also do the same. So I will click um, instead of event start time, it will be the event end time. And I'll also change it for to show the time itself on top in, in addition to the date. So what else do we want to show here currently? Um, so maybe I show the price per ticket, that's right. So I'll show the price. So I'll show, combine the text as well. So the price. And then I will show event doc and then have a price per ticket. And the format, number format I want to do is decimal automatic, it's first currency and clicks okay. And then lastly, what I wanna do maybe is show the number of registered users. So how I've done this, I've actually denormalized it where registered user ref is in this event document itself in addition to the registration containing the specific metadata for that registration. Um, so this allow us to re reduce one less query in, in searching for number of registration of users. Um, there's this one right, different ways to, to do it, but this one re definitely reduces reads a lot. Um, but at the same time, you've got to make sure that that event document is being updated whenever users are added or removed um, from the registration. Anyway, that's why I want to do this to show you how it works. So maybe I'll call it regist registered number, and then I will just simply go event document, get property document, register users, 
uh, number of items, no change. So this will show the number of registered users. I mean, I just call it registered users here. Um, so these are the metadata attributes we require. Oh wait, there's also, of course, the address itself. So if you recall from the back end, this is the sample event we created where the street where we got 200 George Street in New South Wales, Australia. I'm just gonna show this information here. It's quicker, right? Because Google has already combined it for us under the street slash address field of the place picker. So I'm just gonna show the address here. Duplicate, duplicate address. And I will just pick the event doc street field, confirm. Cool. Now let's also add a big yellow button at the bottom to register for the event by the user. So let's call it register event. So when the user clicks this button, um, what I want to do here, just delete this action flow, is what I want to do here is firstly, add the user to this event doc here, register user ref, in addition, create this document here for the registration. So we, let's quickly do this. We will just do create document, um, registration first, and then the first thing I want to do here is the event reference, which is the event docs reference. Secondly, on who's the user, user registering. So it will be the authenticator user, user ref. Thirdly, the time of registration, which is current time. Next is the price, which is specified from the event doc itself. The reason why I'm doing this is because if the use, if somehow the um, organizer changes price, we know um, at, what, at what price did this registered user registered for. Um, and of course, pay bullion will be false here. As I mentioned, I'm not covering the payment component because I have a lot of videos on Stripe Connect already. So please refer to it on setting it up. Um, and this is, and then the next piece I want to do is update the document of the event doc itself in order to update the registered user ref field. So I'm going to add the current authenticated user user ref into it. And then I'll show a snack bar. Um, event register, you've registered or you're registered and then I will navigate back to the, to the home page for now. Um, maybe I'll navigate to a registered page actually. Let's quickly create a blank registered page. So this will also show, um, maybe I'll put instead of a calendar, I'll put maybe a checkbox. Maybe here, I'll just create something like this, an airplane ticket. Um, this will show the events are registered. Uh, this will show the events a user has registered for. Um, and I'll quickly rearrange this. Um, so that's what we'll show here once we sign up to an event. So anyway, back to this action. So let's navigate to the registered event page. Um, so that's how it works. So let's quickly test this out. Actually, um, before we test this out, we need to navigate to this page when the user clicks this container. So we will need to go navigate to the detail and pass in the event doc of this event, which is right here. And I will refresh this. While it's refreshing, maybe something we can also do is that we don't allow the user to register again um, if they're already registered. So this button will only show if the events um, register list of user ref. This contains item, user ref, author the statement. So this means that does this event doc registered user ref contain the current authenticated user opposite if it
does not, we will show this button. If it does, we won't show it anymore. So I'll just refresh this again to update this to update this app. So now that this app has reloaded, let's register for the event. So this is the event pick. I can see here these are all the information currently for that event. So start time, end time, price, number of register user, and address. Let's press register uh, register event. Um, so this will register the user for event. So you can see here because we haven't configured this page yet. Um, but the snack bar showed meaning our Firebase document has been created for this event. So let's quickly check the Firebase itself um, to see whether the document has been successfully created. So when we go to here, you can see the registration has been created. You see event ref is here um, and the user ref, the fields are all created here. If we look at the event itself, we can see here we've also added ourselves to the registered user ref, which is right. Um, so, so that's basically it. And then if you go to press test event again, you can see here this button is gone because the user has registered. Maybe instead of this button, you can show you what you can show a text saying you've already registered for this event. So the UI is ultimately up to you, but that's how it will flow for this app we're building right now. Um, so let's quickly, maybe we can also duplicate this list of events here, um, to show, um, what events this user has registered for. So I'll copy this design here to this registered event page as well. So to make it quicker for us. So instead of this query, all we need to do here is the background query, um, background query collection registration, list of documents. And I'm just going to press, uh, maybe register date time. I would go from decreasing order as well. And what we need to do here for this is get the events information because this um, document, if you recall, does not store, the registration document does not store the user detail. So we have to do a document from reference events, the registration document event ref to get the fields of this event. So, and the path here for the photo would be the events document, event photo. Similarly, for the event name, we need to, we can get it from the registration. So we can get it from the event document, event name, and the price, we want to grab it from the registration document price. Uh, let's quickly change this number format to decimal. And that's it. And of course, when the user clicks into it, you can we can click into detail as well. So maybe what we can do here is um, maybe let's nav navigate to this same page, event detail page as well. So on when we when the action has been created, uh, clicked, we register, we um, navigate to this event. So. That's how it would work. I'm going to stop here because we covered a lot of development already. So to recap, what we did today is from the home page, we allow a user to click into the event detail and within the event detail, they can register for an event. And then the registered events are being shown on this tab here, the list of registered event they have registered for. In the next lesson, we'll cover remaining features such as editing event information, supposedly um, the creator wants to change something about the event, whether that's the location or the name itself. Um, and secondly, we'll cover showing more metadata um, about the event, whether that's like, because we have a number of registered users, maybe we'll show who are these users when the user clicks here. So I can see a list of users who have registered for that event. So just to make the app a bit more complete, remember to comment, like, or subscribe to stay updated on this series.